being synthesized constantly. To maintain order in this evolving world, we rely on the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. The IUPAC is the organization responsible for classifying and naming chemical compounds. When scientists do not adhere to this nomenclature, people can and do get injured, particularly on the stairs. That's where the enforcement branch comes in. We catch those offenders and bring them to chemical justice. How do we solve these heinous crimes? We rely on our knowledge of naming inorganic compounds. Before we can learn about the IUPAC, we must learn how to name ionic compounds. An ionic compound has two parts, a cation with a positive charge and an anion with an equal but negative charge. When properly written, the cation always comes first in the chemical name. Take table salt, for example. The first element, sodium, which has a plus one charge, is the cation. The other element, chlorine, with a minus one charge, is the anion. When naming the compound, the cation is easy. We just say the name, in this case, sodium. The anion is a bit more tricky. First, we must ask how many atoms make up the anion. The answer in this case is one. This makes it easy. We simply add I to the name of the element. Chlorine becomes chloride. To name the compound, just put the cation together with the anion. NaCl is sodium chloride. Not all compounds are this simple, however. In this compound, the cation NH4 and the anion NO3 are polyatomic. Naming polyatomics requires memorization and practice, as they often have non-systematic names, in this case ammonium and nitrate. Knowing these, you can easily name the compound ammonium nitrate, but what if the anion was NO2? Nitrate is what is known as an oxyanion. To name these, just remember these simple rules. No oxygen ends in I. Adding oxygen makes the anion start with hypo and end with ite. Add another, and you just make the anion end in ite. Adding an oxygen onto that makes it end in ate, and adding one more makes it begin with per and end in ate. Let's try it with the nitrate family. No oxygens make the anion nitride. One oxygen makes the anion hyponitrate. Two make it nitrate. Three make it nitrate. Finally, four make it per nitrate. Back to the example NH4NO2, we now know that it is ammonium nitrate. However, we must be aware of some other cases that exist. For example, ASO4 is arsenate. Unlike the nitrogen example, four oxygens do not make a perarsenate. Notice that the adding and subtracting of one oxygen still applies. ASO5 is perarsenate, ASO3 is arsenite, and ASO2 is hypoarsenite. Also note that AS is still arsenide because it does not have any oxygen. of NaOH is added to a solution of CuSO4, yielding a precipitate CuOH2 and aqueous NaSO4. Let's try to name this compound. It has a cation copper and two polyatomic anions hydroxide, each with a minus one charge. Since the cation's charge must equal the anion's charge, we know that the copper must have a plus two charge. Naming this compound copper hydroxide is correct, but not specific enough. Take CuOH into consideration. It would also be copper hydroxide, but these two compounds are distinct and therefore cannot have the same name. This is because copper has multiple possible charges. Using the same technique as before, we can determine that copper in CuOH has a plus one charge. We can indicate this charge on paper by writing it in Roman numerals or in voice by saying the number. CuOH is copper one hydroxide. Our first example, CuOH2, is copper two hydroxide. Now we can say that sodium hydroxide was added to copper two sulfate to yield a copper two hydroxide precipitate. Now that you know the basics of naming ionic compounds, we can apply our knowledge in the field. In this forensic demonstration, a team of scientists used their scientific knowledge to determine who made the naming mistake that resulted in this heinous crime. By using the latest in modern forensic technique, the IUPAC enforcement branch scientists are able to determine the point of origin of the naming error. Good work, men. A classic case of breaking apart polyatomics. The offender has now been brought to justice. Now that you too know the process of naming ionic compounds, you can 
you can join the enforcement branch in their fight against naming errors. First, remember, start by being a good citizen and always name your compounds correctly. If you suspect someone of incorrectly naming a compound, remember to, put, to report it to your local IUPAC station.